Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today we're going to play with some black, white, and gray for a fun little dip dyeing project. Today I want to over dye two different types of sock yarn. One is Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn from Knit Picks. This yarn is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. I dye it very frequently on this channel. The second is a non-Superwash yarn. It is the Marled Sock Yarn from Dyer Supplier. And this yarn is 40% Merino, 40% Peruvian Highland Wool, and 20% Nylon. So it has some great strength for socks, it's just not Superwash. The fun thing about the Marled Sock Yarn base is that in its bare form, it is this beautiful pale gray and charcoal gray because the two plies of the Peruvian Highland Wool are a slightly different color than the two plies of Merino, which makes it especially fun to over dye. But I've never tried over dyeing this yarn with black before. And so is it gonna cover it up completely? Uh, will we see some of those Marled colors peek through? I don't really know, but that's a big reason why I want to do dip dyeing so we can see multiple shades of coverage on the yarn and, well, I think it'll be a lot of fun. So let's go get started. I pre-soaked the 200 grams of yarn for, well, quite honestly, a couple of days. Typically, I would do 20 to 30 minutes, maybe a couple hours, but circumstances happen sometimes, so these have been damp for a while, which means they are very, very well saturated. I am going to add some of my favorite reusable nylon zip ties to the yarn. I do this to function both as an additional tie, um, but it also makes it really easy to grip and move around in the dye pot and I reuse the zip ties over and over again. If you would like to learn more about any of the tools and equipment that I like to use, I have a lot of helpful links in the video description. Full disclosure, I am an affiliate marketer with both Knit Picks and Dyer Supplier, so I do earn commission for any sales generated through my links. Uh, but I try to just link to the items that I use the most frequently and that I love. In my dedicated stainless steel dye pot, and by dedicated, I mean that this is a pot I never use for food since we will be using acid dyes today. In here, I have 16 cups of water plus three tablespoons of white vinegar. A lot of times, if I'm trying to break a dye, I might start with a little bit less acid. And by break the dye, I mean trying to see if the colors will separate into multiple hues, multiple components, which can happen when different dye molecules bind to yarn at different rates. But Dharma True Black is a beautiful black that, in my experience, does not break at all. So I'm not trying to optimize conditions for that. I want to get sort of a black to gray <laughs> on our uh, 200 grams of yarn. For a truly black color, you probably want closer to a 4% depth of shade, which would mean that you have four grams of dye per 100 grams of yarn. And I'm measuring out about a total of 160 milliliters, which is about two thirds of a cup. You can see that this is a lot of dye. It is very pigmented. Um, and so on average, there would be about 80 milliliters or about 0.8 grams of dye per 100 grams. But since we're dip dyeing, uh, the color at one end will be much more pigmented than the other. Not that I'll be able to quantify uh, that color easily, but uh, that is what we'd see with the dip dyeing technique. In my Math of Yarn Dyeing video, I talk about all of these numbers more in depth and give some examples with black and with a gray, uh, so you can get a sense of what the relationship between maybe our stock solution and a different depth of shade truly is. And now I just wanna wait for this to heat up a bit, uh, so that way we can start dip dyeing. All right, we don't need that level of boil. <laughs> All right, I squeezed out most of the water from our pre-soaked yarn, and now we can start dip dyeing. One reason why I decided to do this with 200 grams, one that is white, one that is the marled base, is that I wanted something to compare it to. Since the difference on the marled sock yarn base is going to be significantly more subtle, just for the fact that it's darker already, and because it is non-superwash, um, likely the stroll will absorb more color during this process. Um, it's possible that 
you know, we could have a section on the marled sock base where you can't see the marled nature anymore. But this yarn does look a lot darker when uh, wet than it does once it has dried. So that is something to keep in mind. I'm trying to be very subtle with the other end. I don't want this end to be uh, white, so I am going to dip occasionally, but I want predominantly to get that darkest section really, really dark. I do want there to be some variation in here. And actually, I don't know if you can tell by the runoff, because the water still looks fairly dark, but a lot of color has absorbed already. Whoa. Yeah, that is really, really pretty looking. Um, it does definitely look, the stroll is looking a bit darker, but again, this is sort of a superwash, non-superwash comparison. If I wanted a better comparison of what these different yarn bases would look like when dyed with the same amount of black dye, then I probably should have uh, done this separately to do a true side-by-side -side comparison. But nevertheless, uh, I think that we are ending up with something fun. Yeah, there might actually be some white up here from where... Oh no! I lost my zip tie. Oh dear. <laughs> uh, I actually think I can put it back on. Nice. Sometimes as the zip ties get used like dozens of times, the little clamp can be yeah, it can undo itself a little bit. Especially, it's more likely to do that when warm. But that is actually nearly clear. I do see with this black dye, sometimes you get some residue uh, around the edges of your pot. But, whew, it's a very subtle colorway. Uh, mostly dark with a little bit of light. But it will be in a more repeating way since we've dip dyed. If I just kettle dyed, we could have had some more random light patches, and so this is going to be a bit more ordered. I'm trying to see. With black, it's always hard to know, but I think at this point, we've been dipping for maybe around four minutes. I'm going to go ahead and add the yarn. There is definitely going to be some more color that will absorb on this lightest end, but there's still definitely going to be a difference. So I'm going to go ahead and set a timer for, I think, 10 minutes, and then we'll come back and check in on the yarn. It has been 10 minutes, and okay, we are almost, almost clear. I'm going to go ahead and add a nice healthy splash of white vinegar just to help and I think I might go ahead and let this heat for another 10 minutes just on low heat and then I'm going to turn off the pot and let things cool completely in the pot um, just to give it time to absorb that gives the yarn more time with heat and yeah so I'll come back when things are cool so we can wash the yarn let's wash our gray and black yarn the dye bath cleared completely. So all of that pigment we added is in our 200 grams of yarn. And you can see that there is no bleeding. I am going to add some clear dish soap uh, just to wash things out. And I like to do this as a bleeding check. Some things that can cause bleeding can be, well, soap. And it looks like we've got a hint of some tint, so I'll be washing this a little more. Uh, some things that can cause bleeding are the temperature of your water. Soap can definitely be an impact at times, and it's well set, it shouldn't come out with soap, but the soap can help dislodge some excess dye that could be in the fibers. Um, and another thing that can cause bleeding is the pH. Now, I know that my tap water runs slightly acidic, uh, so it's not likely to cause any bleeding. But, oh, actually, I don't think that's actually bleeding. I think that, here, 
there you can see, I think it's the shadow. Because of the way the light is coming in, it made it look like it was bleeding, but it's really not. So it looks like that there's bleeding over there. That is really, really funny. I don't think this has happened to me before, where I was like, oh, yeah, we're seeing some bleeding, and then realizing that it is just, you know, it looks like that that is dye coming over there. But if I bring it over into the whole light, yeah, there's no color in there. Ha! All right, well, I'm gonna rinse out the rest of the soap, put the yarn through my spin dryer, and then hang it up to dry. But I'm glad that what I thought was bleeding was just a shadow. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys. Well, at least this gave me the opportunity to give some causes of bleeding. And if you keep seeing more bleeding to troubleshoot it, uh, some things that you can try are adding some vinegar to your rinse water, um, letting it soak a little bit. Or if you're continuing to get a lot of bleeding coming out, you can actually go uh, set it up in a new dye pot with a lot of vinegar and eat, reset the color again. Here is the finished dry colorway. In addition to creating these dark, stormy looking colorways, we learned a lot. We learned that you can over dye our marled sock yarn and still really see the difference between the two plies. We've got, I would say a black ply and a charcoal gray and it is beautiful. And I would love to just dye some of this yarn this deep color. For comparison, this is what the bare marled sock yarn looks like. So we dramatically shifted that color, even if we look at the palest end. Through this video, we have confirmation of something we already knew, but with a twist. We have more pigment in our Stroll fingering weight yarn, which is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. The marled sock yarn is non-superwash. It is 40% Peruvian Highland wool, 40% merino, and 20% nylon. And there is no question that we have a darker black on the stroll. It absorbed more pigment. But the thing about this that is especially interesting is that the marled sock yarn started off way more pigmented than the stroll. The stroll is that off-white and we've got a lot more gray in here. So that's making our superwash versus non-superwash difference that much more extreme, which I think is really cool. Dharma True Black is possibly my favorite black acid dye. It doesn't break either with speckling or with dip dyeing, and it really gives you that true black color that you just can't get from food coloring. And so that's why for blacks and for grays, I really recommend commercial dyes like, uh, like acid dyes. But please keep in mind, if you are gonna make that switch to commercial dyes from food coloring, uh, you wanna make sure that you have the appropriate protective gear. I use a respirator mask when dealing with dry dye powder. And you wanna make sure that you have dedicated dye tools and equipment. Uh, I do have a blog post with a bunch of my favorite items that I use, uh, and you can find that link in the video description. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I think that this video is a great example of how the same exact colorway can look so, so different on a different yarn base. Now, we could have gotten something that is a more true comparison uh, if we had used two different pots and we put the same amount of dye in each one and dip dyed them separately. I believe that we could have had the same amount of pigment on both of the skeins. But sometimes it's fun to see what happens in one pot. And so I'm just really happy with this colorway family that we got today. Please subscribe and let me know down below in the comments what you thought about this project. Would it be fun for me to do any more side-by-side -side comparisons like this? I know that uh, the marled sock yarn is quite different from Stroll, but in the past I have really enjoyed doing superwash versus non-superwash type videos and yeah, please let me know if you'd like to see more. If you want to know what happens to most of the yarn that I dye, well, 
head over to the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. Uh, there will be a link in the video description and in the top right hand corner of your screen. The shop is filled with over a hundred skeins of hand dyed yarn featured in my videos. And it's a really great way to support the content that you see here on the channel by buying some yarn and then that goes into more materials and equipment for me to create more videos. So it's a great win-win-win. You can also sometimes see some sneak peeks of what's coming up in the shop because Occasionally things get listed before the video has been published, so it's always worth checking it out to get a sense of what might be coming up. And I do include the video titles and the dates that they are published in the descriptions, um, so that way you can learn more about the yarn before you buy it. Or after you've bought it, you can re-watch the dyeing video as you are turning the yarn into something else. With the exception of this little bit of stroll peeking in right now, this photo could almost be a grayscale. And I'm just really amused looking at it on the monitor. Uh, this was a really fun project and I really want to play with this marled sock yarn so much more. And I have a lot of ideas and I'm excited to see what we can create with it. Thank you so much for watching everyone.